How's it going guys with a medium difficulty question for cardiology for step one as well as step two. Okay, this is fair game. You have to know your murmurs. No fucking excuses, okay? So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below and I'll start the clip. So 33-year-old male, 20 minute history of excruciating chest pain radiating to the back between his scapulae. No past medical history. He's been using cocaine since college. Father, 72 years old, has congested cardiac disease. Question wants to know what's most likely to be seen in this patient. So just hopping right out of the gates, not wasting time, as I just fucking said. The relevance of the father having congestive cardiac disease here, it's a distractor. Okay, not, not important for this question, but this is what NBME will do sometimes. Students get caught up. This is just aortic dissection, isn't it? I mean, history of cocaine use, cocaine causes hypertension. So you can have otherwise young, healthy patients who use cocaine and they're susceptible to aortic dissection, okay? It doesn't have to be Marfan syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos where you have myxomatous degeneration or cystic medial necrosis and Marfan syndrome, okay? So we're looking for what kind of murmur here? That's the question, right? So you need to know that in aortic dissection, you can get retrograde propagation toward the aortic root causing root dilatation and concomitant aortic regurgitation, okay? So we're looking for aortic regurg here. So let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, actually, I'm just gonna quickly run through the number system. One on, it's a six out of six uh, system. So one out of six means ultra silent, colloquially, uh, cardiologist only can auscultate it. Two out of six is soft slash quiet uh, with the stethoscope. Three out of six is easily audible with the stethoscope. Four out of six is easily audible with the stethoscope, plus the patient will have a palpable thrill or heave. Uh, a thrill is just a palpable murmur. A heave will be a systolic impulse uh, from the chest wall due to a strong murmur. Five out of six is uh, easily auscultated with just the rim of the stethoscope. Six out of six, you can hear the uh, murmur without even using a stethoscope, okay? So let's just whip through now. Choice A, two out of six, crescendo, decrescendo murmur, a.k.a. Uh, mid-systolic murmur, wrong fucking answer, okay? Long story short is this is going to be aortic stenosis. Can be pulmonic stenosis, sure, but it's going to be aortic stenosis almost always, all right? Long discussion. Uh, I'd say the most common cause of aortic stenosis you need to know is just autosomal dominant familial bicuspid aortic valve. It need not be Turner syndrome, okay? I see students fall into that trap assuming it has to be Turner syndrome. So they can just give you a you know, a kid who has a murmur who's in high school and it's uh, aortic stenosis, okay? Bicuspid aortic valve, it doesn't have to be Hockham. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, two on six, mid systolic click, wrong answer. Mitral valve prolapse, okay? So most common murmur, off, often benign, actually almost always benign. So Ehlers-Danlos, Marfan syndrome, myxomatous degeneration. They like throwing this as a distractor in questions uh, where, for instance, you might have panic disorder, where they give you a big fucking paragraph, and they might mention a mid-systolic click in there. They say, which of the following is most likely responsible for this patient's presentation? And the answer is just panic disorder, and mitral valve prolapse is wrong. Students all confused, and they're like, but there's a mid-systolic click. It's like, yes, but it's often incidental. This patient clearly has panic disorder. So you have to be mindful of that as a potential distractor. And just, uh, I would mention one other point, which is on 2CK surgery, there's something called mitral valve prolapse syndrome. Okay, so it's almost always asymptomatic, <clears throat> but it can present as fleeting chest pain that occurs 20, 30 plus times, okay, many episodes, in an otherwise young, healthy patient. Okay, so they'll, they'll say fleeting chest pain on the left, and it'll be like a woman who's 30, and you just need to know that's mitral valve prolapse syndrome. Sometimes it can present with pain and they want no treatment necessary. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, early diastolic murmur is the correct answer. So this is aortic regurg, okay? And you need to know that AR is described as an early diastolic murmur or a decrescendo holo diastolic murmur. It's loudest after S2, okay? So very buzzy, very pass level in that regard. I said this is a medium difficulty question because, okay, you have to make a few steps of processing. Okay, you need to sort through here. But 
you need to know that if I just asked you aortic regurg straight up, what does it sound like? You have to say, all right, well, it's just an early diastolic murmur or uh, decrescendo holo diastolic murmur. And it's classically associated with dissections on US simile because as I just fucking said, you can get retrograde propagation to the aortic root causing dilatation. Let's just quickly chop to the other answer choices here. Three on six, holo systolic murmur on answer. Holo systolic can be mitral regurge almost always. There's one fucking question that I swear is an erratum on NBME 20 or 21 where they say mid systolic for mitral regurge, but 29 out of 30 times, okay, it's going to be holo systolic. Holo systolic will also be ventricular septal defect, okay? A lot we can talk about. Wrong fucking answer. Four on six rumbling diastolic murmur is, the, is mitral stenosis, okay? So this is very buzzy that you should memorize the same way you memorize opening snap, okay? So mitral stenosis is almost always going to be a patient who has history of rheumatic heart disease in the vignette. It can show up as someone who's pregnant, okay? So when you get a greater than 50% increase in your plasma volume by second trimester of pregnancy, they can just give you a pregnant woman who all of a sudden has dyspnea, that's gonna be metrostenosis. Or it can just be patient who has rheumatic heart disease in the past, because of course acute rheumatic heart disease is mitral regurge, but later the valve scars over becomes mitrostenosis. 99% of mitrostenoses are due to history of rheumatic heart disease, but this is a rumbling diastolic murmur. Okay, so you know it's an opening snap, while well, also no rumbling diastolic murmur. Aortic regurge can be described as a blowing diastolic murmur. Okay, down the left or the right sternal border, US simile doesn't give a fuck. Wrong fucking answer. Six on six murmur, this is going to be a prosthetic valve. Okay, so that six out of six, you can auscultate uh, without the stethoscope. So you'll be doing the physical exam, you'll be sitting next to the patient, and you can just, while you're uh, chatting with them, you can just hear their click of the prosthetic valve closing, the metal valve, okay? So past level in terms of knowing aortic rigor, just early diastolic, medium difficulty overall, just knowing that a dissection can cause aortic rigor, being able to sift through these other answer choices here. You know the deal, I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.